Hi, y'all. I'm Zoe from Seattle. Please like and subscribe. I'm a pretty easygoing person, but one thing that always scared me was flying. The idea of being so high above the ground with no control made me want to vomit. I didn't understand how people could be so casual about it, like it was as simple as riding a bike. Being afraid to fly wouldn't be such a big deal, except I really wanted to travel. I dreamed of seeing the world, exploring new cultures, and forming unforgettable connections with strangers. If that stranger happened to have a cute smile, even better. Right now, that was only a daydream. But that didn't mean my life was boring. I was the star of our high school trivia team. My teammates loved me. Sometimes, I didn't even wait for the question to be over before I hit the buzzer to answer. William Shakespeare, the War of 1812, the Pythagorean Theorem. We were competing in the semifinals, and we were just one correct answer away from winning. The quiz master read the question off his card. My teammates all looked at me. I had to think about it for a second. The opposing team all leaned in to confer amongst themselves. I saw them nod and agree, about to buzz in. But then I slapped the buzzer first and got the answer right. My teammates and I cheered. We won. Now we were going to the finals and one step closer to winning the championship. The next day at school, the teacher sat down with our team to talk about the finals and go over our strategy. You guys should be proud of yourselves. You did great. Are you excited to go to Tokyo? Oh my gosh, Tokyo? Somehow I had completely forgotten the finals were in Japan. I thought of all my dreams of travel and exploration. This was so exciting. And then my heart sank. Wait, do we have to fly? Of course you're flying. It's almost 5,000 miles away. Can't we take a boat? Do you have any idea how long that would take? Come on, Zoe, I know how smart you are. Statistically, flying is the safest way to travel. Tell that to Buddy Holly. I didn't even really know who Buddy Holly was, to be honest. I just knew he was an old singer my dad liked who had died in a plane crash. My dad was always playing his records at home and singing his songs while he did the dishes. On the day we were supposed to leave, I begged my dad to let me stay home. All I could think about was how horribly wrong things might go. Honey, I understand you're scared, but your team is depending on you. There's nothing to be afraid of. He tried to hide the Buddy Holly record behind his back, but not before I noticed. And just look around. This is one of your dreams. I promise you're going to be so glad that you went. I looked around my room, at the travel collages on my wall and the globe on my nightstand, the book about the seven wonders of the world. My dad was right. This was something I'd always imagined. I was gonna do it, even if it made me sick. Plus, it was probably all in my head anyway. People flew every day without problems. Maybe it'd even be relaxing to chill on the plane. But the airport wasn't relaxing at all. I was so nervous that I was shaking in the security line. One of the TSA employees saw how nervous I was and assumed I must be smuggling something or some kind of criminal. They made me step out of the line and searched me. It was so embarrassing. My teammates weren't any help at all. They just pointed and laughed. Jerks. We wouldn't even be going on this trip if it weren't for me. I was the one who got all the answers right. They could at least have the decency to not make things harder for me. I was so mad that when we boarded the plane, I sat way in the back away from my teammates. Anyone sitting here? I was too nervous to find my voice, so I just shook my head no. Someone sat down next to me. I didn't even bother looking, but I could feel his eyes on me. And finally, I turned. Why are you staring at me? You look like you're gonna pass out. Thanks. I'm aware. You're not one of those people who's scared of flying, are you? You know, statistically, it's actually the safest way to travel. Yes, I know. Why does everyone keep telling me that? Probably because they're trying to make you feel better. Well, it's not helping. You don't have to be rude about it. Was this guy freaking kidding me? Why did he have to sit next to me when there were all these other open seats? I'd gone all the way in the back to avoid my teammates, only to have some obnoxious jerk bother me and make things even worse. I couldn't wait to land. I checked the flight time on my seat back screen. It was only 12 hours more? I didn't even think I'd make it 20 more minutes next to this person, let alone that long. I glared at him, but he slapped on a pair of headphones and ignored me. Fine by me. I'd rather look out the window anyway, even if he was kind of cute. All of a sudden, I saw a lightning bolt go off right near the plane's wing. The intercom crackled. Uh, folks, this is your captain speaking. We're gonna be experiencing a bit of turbulence here, so uh, please stay seated while we uh, navigate out this rough patch. My plane was shaking uncontrollably. My stomach dropped. This was it. 
I was just gonna die like Buddy Holly. I started to cry. Why couldn't we have just taken a boat? Just then, I felt a hand take mine. I looked over and the root boy smiled reassuringly. It's gonna be okay, trust me. I couldn't speak, so I just squeezed his hand as tight as I could. Not long after that, the turbulence stopped and everything went back to normal. And just like that, everything changed between me and the boy in the next seat. I'm Ken. I'm Zoe. We spent the rest of the flight talking. We told each other everything. All of that time went by so fast. I was shocked when we landed that the flight was already over. We even stayed up talking on the phone when I got to the hotel that night. Ken was from Japan originally, but he had lived in the US for a few years now. He still came back to Tokyo all the time to visit his sobo. That's Japanese for grandmother. I thought that was really sweet. The next day, Ken showed me all around Tokyo. We went to a beautiful shrine in Asakusa, a cat cafe where we drank tea and played with kittens, and to the top of Tokyo Sky Tree, a skyscraper that overlooked the entire city. This was even better than what I had imagined. I was really doing it, exploring a new country and seeing sights right out of my photo collage. And to have Ken by my side made it even more special. Just when I thought the day couldn't get any better, Ken gently touched my face and kissed me. Then he wrapped his arms around me and we gazed out at the city lights. The day after, I was supposed to practice with my team for the finals, but I was still kind of annoyed with them. So I pretended to be sick, then put on a disguise and snuck out of the hotel to meet Ken. We took the bullet train to Kyoto. I could see Mount Fuji out the window. It was even more beautiful than the photos. We're lucky. Sometimes it's too foggy to see from the train. I think you're my good luck charm. Ken took me to see this amazing mountain shrine in Kyoto. There were a thousand orange tori gates leading up to the peak, and we walked through them as we made our way up. It was cherry blossom season too, so we were surrounded by beautiful flowers. There was just one problem. To visit the full shrine, we had to climb all the way up the mountain. By the time we got halfway up, I was exhausted. I wish I'd known we were gonna be climbing uphill this whole time. I would have worn better shoes. I told you it was a mountain shrine. But you didn't say how steep it was. To make things worse, it suddenly started pouring out. We were soaked. To try to find shelter, we raced up the steps and kept going until we came across a thick copse of cherry trees. We ducked under the blossoms and shook out the rain from our clothes as best as we could. I was shivering. Sorry, I should have brought an umbrella. Yeah, you didn't prepare us for this trip at all. You know, I'm not your tour guide. You could have brought one yourself. But you're from here. You know this place better than I do. Do you think everyone from Japan can just predict the weather? That's not what I meant. I heard the crack of thunder just then. Come on, we should head back down. I wasn't sure about leaving our shelter, but I followed Ken out into the rain. I noticed there wasn't anyone else around. Where did they all go? We wandered around for a little while, and I started to think we were lost. I could have sworn there was a path right here. It seems like you don't really know what you're doing. I don't see you coming up with any ideas. I thought we were just going sightseeing. I didn't realize I needed to bring a survival kit. Do you do anything else besides complain? Looks like my first impression of you was right. My cheeks colored in anger. Yeah? What was your first impression? That you were a spoiled American who expected the whole world to revolve around you. I couldn't believe how wrong I had been about Ken. He wasn't my good luck charm. Since we'd met, our plane had almost been struck by lightning. We'd got caught in a storm, and now we were lost on top of a mountain. That was about as unlucky as it gets. Up ahead, there were two branching paths. We should go left. Well, I think we should go right. I think I see people further down this way. Come on. Go ahead. I'm going this way. We should stick together. Why? You don't think a spoiled American can find her own way down? Suit yourself. Ken started down one path and I went down the other. Almost immediately, I questioned my decision. Ken may have been an obnoxious jerk, but the mountain felt scarier alone. I kept hearing strange animal sounds. I thought I even saw eyes following me from behind the trees. Calm down, Zoe. It's just your mind playing tricks on you. You don't need some guy to hold your hand to find your way. All of a sudden, I slipped and started to slide down the mountain. The ground was so wet from the rain that I didn't stop sliding until I hit a tree trunk. Ow! My ankle really hurt. I tried pushing myself up, but I was in too much pain. How could I have been so stubborn? Taking off by myself just to prove some stupid point? Now I was gonna die here, alone and freezing. 
my travel dreams over just when they were getting started. Cherry blossoms were falling all around me from hitting the tree, but I was too upset to notice how pretty it was. There were more strange noises. It seemed like they were getting closer. I tried again to stand. It hurt so much, but I forced myself to my feet and hobbled back to the path. At this rate, I wouldn't be down the mountain for a week. I was so mad at myself that I stamped my foot. My eyes bugged out. That was the ankle that I'd already hurt, and I just made it worse. I burst into tears. I tried to catch my balance on my good foot, but then I started to slip again. Suddenly, someone caught me and held me up. It was Ken. Can you walk? I shook my head. Ken lifted me into his arms. Then he carried me through the rain all the way down to the bottom. I thought he was going to give me a hard time for hurting myself, but if he was judging me, he kept it to himself. At the bottom, I sat on a bench while Ken checked my ankle. It's just a sprain. Do you want to go to the hospital? I want to eat. Ken smiled. We went to this amazing sushi restaurant. It was so good that by the time we finished our meal, my ankle barely hurt anymore. I'm sorry I wasn't more prepared. I was so excited to show you around that I forgot to check the weather. I'm sorry I took it all out on you. It wasn't just your responsibility, it was both of ours. On the train back to Tokyo, Ken and I were both too exhausted to talk more. I fell asleep with my head on his shoulder. When I got to my hotel room, I found a gift basket with a bunch of my favorite snacks. There was a note inside. It was from my teammates. We're sorry. We hope you make it to the finals tomorrow. Love, team. The next day, we were on stage competing for the championship. I kept looking out at the crowd hoping to see Ken, but he wasn't there. He hadn't answered my call that morning either. I wondered if we were still fighting. It seemed like things were either perfect or we wanted to strangle each other with nothing in between. Zoe! I glanced over at my teammate. Are you paying attention? The quiz master just asked the final question. My teammates were all waiting anxiously. I just smiled and slapped the buzzer. And just like that, we won the championship. You scared us for a second. Seems like you were in another world. Maybe I was but I could multitask. That night, my team and I celebrated our championship. I was hoping Ken would join us, but I still couldn't get in touch with him. I hoped everything was all right. After I got back to my hotel room, I packed and ate some of my snacks. I checked my phone. No new messages. I was disappointed, but it was hard to be completely sad when we'd just won the championship and I'd gotten to have all these great new experiences. My dad was right. I was really glad I came on this trip. On the plane, I sat near the back again. My team wanted to keep celebrating, but I was tired and still nervous about flying. Anyone sitting here? A smile crept onto my face. Ken! Sorry I didn't call. I was with my Sobo. She has a strict no-phones rule when we're spending time together. Of course! I forgot he was going to see his grandmother. We talked the whole way home. Maybe there was more turbulence, but if there was, I was too happy to notice it.